Hello folks. Today I'm doing a review of the ESAB Mini Arc 161 LTS. Uh, it's a small stick and lift TIG welder. Uh, the review will lean towards looking at the welder as a possible starter TIG machine, uh, something relatively inexpensive that somebody could use to learn TIG welding or as just a cheap home garage welder. I recently reviewed an Amico TIG 225. Uh, and I'll be making some comparisons in this review because I think the ESAB welder could be a good alternative to something like the Amico uh, for somebody who's willing to spend a little bit more. This is a dual voltage machine that can stick weld and will do lift start DC TIG. It's a fairly basic welder. You have your amp bridge knob, uh, switch to change between stick and TIG modes, uh, power switch, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it doesn't have remote amperage control or even a built-in gas solenoid for TIG, uh, so it is basic. Uh, but it's also relatively inexpensive. Now compared to the Amico, it is about twice as expensive and if you compare it to a similarly priced Everlast for example, uh, the Everlast would have more features. But it is much less expensive than the cheapest entry TIG machine from Miller or Lincoln and it comes with a three-year warranty and ESOB generally has a good reputation for responsive customer support. Uh, I bought it locally from a welding shop that sells and supports ESOB welders uh, and they can handle warranty shipping if needed, stuff like that. And all that stuff is worth something in my opinion, uh, even before you start talking about the actual quality of the welder. Um, how important local support is to you is something you'll have to decide. Uh, but if it is something that's appealing to you, then this welder is a very inexpensive way to get that uh, in a new inverter TIG welder. Uh, so first we'll take a look at what the welder comes with. Uh, it's available in both a stick only and a TIG package. Uh, I didn't get the TIG package, I got the stick package. Uh, both come with the same welder, but the stick package doesn't include TIG accessories. Um, I already have an argon flow meter, TIG torch consumables, and stuff like that, so I opted just for the less expensive stick version, and then I ordered a TIG torch with a valve separately. Uh, that ended up a little bit cheaper than buying the TIG package, uh, and I got a torch I know I like, and I didn't have to pay for stuff I didn't need. Uh, but if you're just starting out, the TIG tent package does come with everything you need to get started uh, TIG welding with this machine and it's a fairly decent price for everything it comes with uh, considering how much more it costs than the stick only package but you can always get the stick package like I did and then just buy the bits and pieces for TIG welding that you want. So what I'm going to show you here is what comes with the stick package. Uh, the TIG package will come with all of the same stuff plus a TIG torch, TIG consumables, and an argon regulator and hose. So the work clamp it comes with is pretty decent. Uh, it's got a real stiff spring on it, copper jaws, copper strap in the jaws. Pretty standard fare for included clamps, uh, but it does seem like it should be fine. Uh, it does have DIN's 25 connectors for the cables uh, for the front of the welder, and those do come pre-installed on the cables. The cable itself is pretty decent. It's a 4 gauge cable. The insulation that's on it isn't the best, uh, but it's not bad either. Um, if you saw the update video I did on the Amico welder, uh, you saw where I was able to melt the cable, and I did compare it to another cable that I had, which uh, even at a higher temperature than what the Amico melted at, uh, the cable was not damaged at all, and that was actually this cable right here. Uh, so even at a higher temperature than what just completely melted right through the Amico included cable, uh, this cable was not, not harmed at all. So uh, decent cable, decent insulation. Uh, may not be the most abrasion-resistant cable out there, but uh, it's decent. And it does come with an electrode holder. Uh, the cable is the same as what's on the work clamp cable, 4 gauge, uh, nothing special, but, but nothing wrong with it either. Uh, the electrode holder itself, um, like a lot of included electrode holders with welders, uh, it's fairly cheap, pretty basic, uh, but it's not bad. It's not overly bulky, seems like it should work just fine, although really nothing super special about it either. Uh, really the only other thing it comes with as far as accessories are the adapter cables for the power cord. The power cord on the end of the welder has a plug that will match up with these adapters uh, and you have one adapter pigtail for 240 volts and a separate adapter pigtail for 120 volts. And these pigtails feel like decent quality. Uh, they're very beefy cord. Uh, 12 gauge wires, uh, just really thick, must have quite a lot of insulation there. And they are 105C rated, so uh, definitely decent quality cords. The power cord on the welder is the same type of cord, 105C 12 gauge. And uh, I'll go over the welder too, but one thing I did note uh, that I'll just talk about right now while I'm talking about these pigtails is that the power cord on this machine is 10 feet long. 
So uh, that's definitely longer than most of the welders that I've had and tested. Uh, most welders are going to come with something like maybe a six to eight foot cord. And then each of these pigtails is another good two feet in length. So, uh, so that's going to give you a total power cord length of about 12 feet, uh, even without using an extension cord. Uh, so that's pretty nice. So you got a pretty good, pretty good power cord length on this. Uh, the work clamp and electrode holder cables are both 10 feet long as well. So even without an extension cord, pretty decent reach with this machine, so that's pretty nice to see. And finally, in this little plastic bag, it does come with a manual and then just a really short guide about how to set up the shoulder strap that comes on the welder. Now, taking a look at the front of the welder, as I mentioned, you do have an amperage knob. Uh, it moves really smooth, feels pretty sturdy, and you do have two scales on this knob. The inner scale is for when you're connected to 120 volt input and the outer scale is for when you're connected to 240 volt input. So you have the full range of motion on the knob, uh, no matter what power input you're hooked to, uh, but you have a maximum of 110 amps of output on 120 volts and 160 amps of output connected to 240 volts. Uh, rocker switch to switch between lift TIG and stick modes and just a power on off rocker switch. Uh, you have a power indicating light here and an over temp indicating light here. So that's it for the controls. Like I said, very basic, uh, but also very simple to operate. And down here at the bottom, you do have your negative and positive cable connection points, and those are just DINs 25 connectors. Uh, and they do have these little plastic caps that you can snap on over the connector um, just to kind of protect it from dust or dirt, I guess. Now, ESOB does list part numbers for this package, both with and without a carrying case. Uh, but the only thing I could find available anywhere was with the carrying case. So I don't know if the part number without the case is you know older and discontinued or what, but uh, the welder did come with the carrying case and the stick package comes with the case as well. Now the case does seem like decent quality. Uh, it does fit the welder and everything it came with, uh, with probably enough extra room for a few other things. Uh, so nothing wrong with the case. Um, it would protect the welder. Um, some people might find it nice to put the welder in for transport. For me personally, the case doesn't really add a lot of value. Uh, if I needed to take a welder somewhere and I opted to take this one, it would be because it is very small, very light, compact, uh, very portable and easy to transport. It's got the nice carrying strap on the top. I mean, this welder would just fit really nice, you know, on the floor behind a seat, something like that. Uh, you could stick it just about anywhere. And, you know, the accessories you could just tuck somewhere as well. Um, so basically to just put the welder and all the parts in, in a great big box uh, just isn't something I probably would personally do very often. But it does come with the case, and a lot of people would probably find some use for it. Uh, overall, the welder seems to have decent build quality, decent fit and finish. Uh, the accessories are nothing exceptional, but they're okay. And uh, definitely a step above what comes with the Amico welder, uh, just for comparison. Uh, so here's the TIG torch that I got for the welder. Uh, this is not the torch that would come with the TIG package. I bought this separately. Uh, this is a CK Worldwide CK9V torch uh, with the built-in gas valve. And this welder does not have a gas solenoid to control the gas. Uh, so you're just going to have to control the gas yourself with the valve on the torch. Uh, I prefer this torch over a lot of included torches because it is a 9 size torch instead of a 17. Now the 17 is, is a pretty good general purpose torch. It can handle a little bit more amperage than the 9. Uh, they're very prolific. Accessories for them are everywhere. So I do understand why the 17 torch is kind of the standard included torch with a lot of welders. Uh, but I do prefer a 9. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to control. Uh, and while this is rated at 125 amps, that is at 100% duty cycle. Uh, and I've run a number 9 torch up at 160 amps without any issues for a short time. With this welder and what I would use it for, a uh, 9 size torch is fine. Uh, and this is also a flex head torch, uh, so it's got the adjustable angle on the head. Uh, so that's a nice feature. Again, something that doesn't come with the welder. So. Another reason why I just wanted to buy the torch separate because I wanted to get uh, a torch that I prefer. Uh, and it does have the Superflex cable also, so that's very nice. Now the way this setup works, this will just plug right into the DINs connector on the front of the welder. And there's a separate gas hose that comes out of this adapter. And that gas hose just has a fitting on the end of it that will thread directly into the argon regulator. So once that's connected up, I can just turn the gas on and off with this valve as needed. Uh, so again, this didn't come with the package. Uh, but just wanted to show you what torch that I did get to use with this. Uh, now in terms of internal build quality, I'm not going to tear it all apart on camera. Uh, but I will say that despite being made in China, uh, it does have a much better uh, internal build quality than the Amico. I know a lot of times people will say, well, the name brand welders are made in China too, so you're really just paying for the name. 
Um, I'll get the Amico or I'll get the other uh, cheap off-brand Chinese welder and it's the same thing. While this welder does have a much better internal build quality than the Amico, uh, it also uses name brand components. Now the welder is built in China, but it has top quality name brand capacitors uh, and other components in it. Uh, so it should be a more robust welder than the Amico. Uh, now granted, anything can fail and every machine is an individual and stuff can happen. Uh, but in general, it's not just the name. Uh, you are getting better components and a better built machine in general. So that's just a quick look at the welder and what it comes with. Uh, now I'm going to fire it up, uh, do some welding with it. I have a, just a couple real small projects that I'm going to do with it. Uh, so I'll try a few different things with it and see how it does. All right, so it's been a few days. I've got some use on the machine, mostly TIG. Uh, no problems at all. I did run a little bit of stick with the machine, not a ton. Uh, what I did run ran perfectly well. Uh, from what I've seen and everything I've read, testimonials I've seen, uh, it's a very good little stick welder. But again, for my testing, for this kind of look at the machine, I kind of wanted to focus more on the TIG aspect of it. Uh, so I did do a little bit of random testing, welded some razor blades together, stuff like that. Uh, but I also did a couple of real-world projects. I welded these little posts onto these clamps here so that I could use these on my table. These are some Craig uh, auto-adjusting clamps, uh, very convenient. So uh, those are going to be nice for just kind of some light-duty, real quick clamping on the table. Uh, I also threw together a stand for my bench grinder, uh, just using some random odds and ends I had laying around for steel. So it's not a super fancy stand, it's just uh, functional, gets the job done. Uh, but I did build that completely with this welder using TIG, and uh, everything works great. Uh, welder works very well. Uh, the lift start feature works very well, very easy to do. Uh, everywhere from the very minimum setting of the welder all the way up to the maximum, uh, the lift start feature works great. Uh, so again, overall, just as a starter machine, I think this is pretty good. Very basic uh, lift start, no internal gas solenoid. Uh, no digital displays, anything like that, but I'm still able to do everything from weld razor blades to build a stand for the grinder, um, all kinds of little projects in between. So while it's basic, I do think it is a very good starter TIG machine. I did test the output of the machine uh, at the very minimum setting. The lowest I was able to get the machine to go was actually 10 amps. Now the spec does say the minimum is 5 amps. Uh, I was only able to get it to go down to 10, but as you can see, even at 10 amps, I was able to weld this razor blade without filler. Um, I had a little dab of filler on the corner to tack it, uh, but then I was actually running a bead across uh, without any filler at all at 10 amps. So um, 10 amps is low enough to uh, weld these razor blades together without blowing through, even without filler. And one thing that is nice about the lift start is that you don't get that uh, initial burst of higher amperage that you get with some high frequency starts. Uh, so when set to 10 amps, I could light up right on the razor blade and not blow through or anything. So it does go plenty low uh, for, you know, for some delicate stuff. Uh, and here's a couple of razor blades I put together when I did use filler. Um, I actually used some 025 MIG uh, wire 
as filler wire. Uh, and it was actually chilling the puddle a bit too much. Um, so I actually probably could have used two or three more amps uh, with that filler uh, to get the bead to, to run properly. So uh, this doesn't necessarily demonstrate my skill or anything. Um, not the greatest welds ever, but just trying to show that at the minimum setting, uh, does go more than low enough to weld razor blades. Now I also checked the accuracy of the settings here on the dial um, as far as what it shows on the knob versus the amperage you actually get out of it and it is a little bit off. Uh, it's anywhere from 5 to 10 amps high. Uh, now high in terms of you get about 5 to 10 more amps out of the machine versus what the knob shows uh, and I did notice that when I was uh, welding certain things it did seem like it was running a tiny bit hot uh, and when I checked with my meter I did confirm that uh, and I do have some clips to show you here how much high it was running on what settings uh, and again the minimum output I got was around 10 amps uh, and the max output I was able to get was right at 160 amps the fan does run all the time that the welder is on so no fan on demand no temperature control or timer controlled or anything like that welders on fan runs it's not a super loud fan it's kind of a low pitched hum so not a real obnoxious fan or anything, didn't really bother me. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Not a lot of super in-depth information, but it is a very basic welder. Not a whole lot to it, not a whole lot to go over. Very simple to operate, works very well. For anybody looking for a starter TIG machine or just a fairly inexpensive TIG machine, uh, this does work great. Uh, again, basic lift start, torch valve, uh, but you can definitely get a lot of work done with it. Uh, no real issues. Uh, it's also just a, a great portable welder. Uh, it's very light. Uh, my scale read 16 pounds, so definitely very compact and light. Has a decent reputation for durability, and ESOB has a good reputation for customer support, and this does have a three-year warranty. Uh, so I would definitely expect it to be a pretty robust welder that holds up well over time, and uh, I would also expect ESOB to back the welder up without any issues if you did have problems. Now, so there you have it. Probably not for everyone, but just wanted to throw it out there as an option for people that are looking and uh, give you a quick take on it. So if you have any questions or if there's anything specific you want me to try with this welder, let me know. I'll post it up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.